in this week's experiment, we are going to be determining the molarity of copper two ions in solution using spectroscopy. Now, in order for us to really understand how we're going to go about this, we need to understand what spectroscopy is. So spectroscopy is a technique that we use to go to send a light through a solution. And on the other side of the light, there is a detector, kind of like your eyeballs. It detects this, uh, how much light comes out the other side. And so this diagram that we're looking at on the bottom of, of this page, we can see a light bulb. It shines light through a monochromator, which monochromator basically singles out a specific wavelength. And that light then passes through the solution and into the detector. Now, when we talk about solutions, you know, there are some solutions that have color in them. Copper 2 has a specific color to it. In fact, copper 2 has a blue color to it. And so what we're going to observe in this particular experiment is we're going to observe how the, the dilution of the copper 2 solution affects the absorbance that is measured. Now, the absorbance is measured through Beer's Law. And so the absorbance is equal to concentration times L, which is the path length, times epsilon, which is the molar absorptivity. Now, the path length and the and epsilon, the molar absorptivity, is actually, they're constants, all right? So they don't change. What does alter is the absorbance and the concentration. So one thing that you have to understand is that the absorbance is proportional to the concentration. As you increase the concentration, you are also going to increase the absorbance. And so we're going to use that to our advantage. Now, what we are going to do in this experiment is we're going to take an instrument. We're going to analyze a specific solution that you make. Now, the solutions that you're going to make, there are five reference solutions. And then there is a sixth unknown solution. The reference solutions are going to be a serial dilution. All right. And so what is a serial dilution? A serial dilution is where you basically dilute the stock solution to a specific amount. Now, uh, you'll have five test tubes. In test tube one, you're going to have the stock solution. <clears throat> the stock solution is 0 0.08 molar. So this is a predetermined value. Now what you'll do in test tube two is you're going to do a serial dilution. So what you do, what that means is that you're going to take eight milliliters of the stock and then you'll take two milliliters of DI water. All right, and so as we go through the series in test tube three, you're going to have six milliliters of stock, four milliliters of DI water. Test tube four, you're going to have four milliliters of stock solution, six milliliters. And in the last test tube, you're going to have two milliliters of stock and eight milliliters of DI water. So as you can see, what's going to happen is, is that as you go through the, very, the different test solutions, you are going to observe a change in the concentration. Now, in order for us to calculate, now these are your reference solutions. So we're going to calculate the concentration of your reference solutions. So in each one of these, we're going to use M1V1 equals M2V2. Our goal is to solve for M2. M1 is always going to be 0.08 because that's your starting concentration. V1 represents the volume of stock solution that you that you put into each test tube. So in this first example, you have eight milliliters of the stock. Now our goal is to solve for M2, so it's, that's our variable. And then V2 is just the total volume of the solution. So eight plus two gives me 10 milliliters. Now, it's 
quite easy to do this. It's just simple algebra. So you'll divide out, you'll multiply the two together, 0 0.08 times eight, then divide by 10, and you'll get some concentration for your second test solution. In this case, the reference solution. So, <clears throat> Now, we will have a sixth test tube. In your sixth test tube, you're going to have an unknown concentration. And so, you're going to take these samples, you're going to place them into the spectrometer, and you're going to measure their absorbencies. All right? So, the concentrations, you are going to calculate these using the M1V1 equals M2V2. The absorbance will be measured from the instrument. All right, so you'll get this from the instrument. And the same thing here, this will come from your instrument. Now, this is going to be determined graphically. All right, so what we see here is a graph. Now, on the graph paper, you're going to be uh, plotting absorbance versus concentration. And it's really best to turn your graph 90 degrees so that way you get let me draw it here right fast so it's best to do it this way you'll get a better graph in the end so for now i'm just going to use what i have here so so we have our graph and from our reference solutions we're going to plot them okay so you'll have hopefully they're going to be a straight line that's the goal if your reference solutions are not a straight line, then you didn't do a very good job making your dilutions. So it's very important that your dilutions are made correctly. Now, once you have your, your data points plotted, then what you're going to do is you're going to take our straight edge, a ruler, and you're going to draw a best fit line through this. Okay, so you'll have something that looks like this. Now, you, you're, not contract, you're not trying to connect the first to the last. You're trying to draw a line through the middle of your data points that's why if you if your data points are real skewed then you probably should go back and redo your your dilutions and redo the experiment all right so that's the from a technical standpoint you don't want a curve when it's supposed to be a straight line that's not what you want now once you've obtained this now what we can do is we know the concentration of all of your reference solutions, you know the absorbances. What we do, what we don't know, is the concentration of your unknown. That's the goal for this experiment. Now, the way we can do this is, you can take your absorbance that you measured for the unknown. So let's say it's found here, all right, and that's where it's found on the graph. So what you can do is you can use your best fit line. So using the ruler, we're going to go straight across until we intersect the best fit line, and then. We're going to come straight down. And so once it intersects the x-axis, wherever it touches the x-axis, that will represent the concentration of your unknown. And just so you know, these brackets that I'm drawing here represent concentration and molarity. All right, so once you have that, you're pretty much done. So you just fill that into the circle here. So you'll just write in whatever value you, you get from the from the graph and that measures you know that's how you determine the unknown concentration now the 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 second data table that you see here this is just merely looking at the graph that comes from the instrument and so when you look at this graph uh, you're going to have something that looks like this a curve that looks like this in fact since you do a serial dilution you're going to notice that you're you're going to have the same peak it's just going to be lower in size and so what you're going to want to do is figure out the top of the curve because that's where you get your maximum absorbance for the wavelength so whatever that is that represents your wavelength and that's the value that you write in here for each of these it should be the same because the solution stays the same color it's just diluted and, it, and it's a lighter color so it's not your wavelength won't change, but your but your peak height will change because of the dilution factor. So 
the last thing that you'll do is answer the post live questions. Make sure you answer them completely. And when you get down to the last two or three problems, uh, so one of these you'll be dealing with using Beer's Law. All right, so this, this one here uses Beer's Law. And the others just use, you know, molarity and dilution. So make sure that you uh, answer these completely and show all your work. All right. All right. So that's the that's the gist of this experiment. And so have fun with it and good luck.